Right. It's prime time. It's rating season. I have never been there. Hello, folks. Uh, welcome to the Finance Committee meeting, September 29th, 2016. Uh, it's a continuance of the second of last night's meeting, uh, addressing all the articles for the special town meeting. Uh, gentlemen, just like and ladies, uh, like last night, I think we had a very good meeting. If we can kind of stay focused on the articles, uh, get through them. Uh, we got a bit more tonight than we had last night, so uh, if we can do that, that'd be great and try to keep the side conversations to a minimum. All right, uh, the first article, uh, it's a little bit different than on the agenda, just to accommodate some of uh, the people coming in to talk. Uh, article 22, uh, the Gutierrez, Gutierrez Corporation uh, has an article on there, and uh, Attorney Petnari, uh, I believe you're the representative for the I am. company? I am, thank Excellent. you, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. I am Ernie Petnari, I'm a lawyer here in Melford. My office is at 12 Main Street. I've represented the Gutierrez Company in connection with this property, which is off of Cedar Street in the vicinity of Deer Street, which is a paper street in Milford, uh, for the better part of the last 15 years. Um, in 2002, this property was rezoned into the BP Business Park Zoning District. And from that time till now, Gutierrez has attempted, with limited success, to market the property in its current zoning, which is for commercial offices. They own 82 acres, and they have tried uh, over the years to populate a four lot subdivision zoned for commercial purposes which would have four fairly large commercial buildings in them comprised of offices of about 100,000 square feet apiece. Um, they've tried, as I've said, without success for many years uh, and they have been very careful in marketing the property so that everything that they've done would conform to zoning. Um, this past year they received an inquiry on the property from something called Restaurant Depot. Restaurant Depot is one of the largest national wholesalers engaged in the provision of restaurant comestibles and supplies in the United States. They have 118 locations in 35 different states. And Restaurant Depot would like to come in and locate on the Gutierrez property, but the property is not zoned for the purpose to which Restaurant Depot would put it. Um, in order to be eligible for location in the Gutierrez property, the property would have to accept wholesaling with storage, because that's what they do. Um, Larry's here, and we've talked about this for, for many, many months. The original concept behind the business park zone was to have a place where there would be office, not retail uses, and would segregate those uses on this site, on these sites in Milford, and would have that, those sites preserved for those uses. Um, Restaurant Depot is not a, not a retail use, but still, because it's a wholesale use, it would still need to have some kind of an exception to the zoning bylaw. So with that in mind, with Larry's help, with, with Rick Villani's help, with conversations we've had with the planning board, et cetera, we've created a proposed article which would allow an exception to the existing zoning bylaw, which would allow wholesaling with storage in a business park zone with a special permit from the planning board. So this way the planning board would retain control over anything that went in there. This way there would still be no retail uses. It would still be primarily business uh, that was originally approvable for the business park. And that provision also would have a limitation so that no more than 25% of the property affected would be usable for the wholesaling with storage. Um, the arguments that we make in support of that is that it's a relatively minor exception. The buildings that Restaurant Depot typically builds are, are buildings which are compatible with offices. In fact, in most of their locations, they are located in office parks throughout the country. There are a couple of, more of their more recent developments, one in Virginia, one in North Carolina, which prove that fact. And finally, the point we make is that it's a relatively de minimis exception relative to the zoning bylaw, and it still allows the town to control whatever goes in to the business park zone because it retains the power over the proposal in the form of a special permit from the planning board, which requires four votes, four affirmative votes. The reasoning behind it in very simple terms, ladies and gentlemen, is economics. Um, the key to the development of this parcel is to get the first unit occupied, and it, Gutierrez and Restaurant Depot honestly, sincerely believe that by getting this occupied, the other three 
pads will then get sold, or get, get tenanted rather, and will become occupied. Um, in terms of what that means to the town, there are improvements which are required in the approvals, which are in the Cedar Street area, a road widening, there's signalization that is part of the conditional approvals, there's improvements to the on and off ramps on 495. So there's extensive infrastructure improvements that come along with this. In terms of numbers, Restaurant Depot's building would cost Restaurant Depot $15 million to develop. And it will take approximately three to four million dollars in infrastructure improvements to get an occupancy permit for it. So right now, the in the offing would be a $20 million investment in the community that these folks are prepared to make. At the same time, Gutierrez has, as I've indicated, patiently been trying to market the <coughs> property. They're paying about $75,000 in taxes on the property. Um, thus far, their prospects for getting it fully tenanted, tenanted without that first keystone tenant are, are relatively remote in their opinion, and they'd like the opportunity to go forward with this proposal. Um, that's basically what I'm prepared to say to the planning board on Tuesday evening at our public hearing, and what I propose to repeat on the town meeting floor. Um, I'm here to answer any questions you might have, but obviously brevity is important for all of us, so I, I can close on that. I, I don't have any questions, to be honest with you. Does anyone here? Mark? In, in the article, it talks about, and in addition, by adding the following new definition to Article 4, mm -hmm. retail sales. Mm -hmm. When we just discussed the fact that it wouldn't include retail sales in that, in that area. So why... why it, it, this opens it up to, to that well, opportunity, it, right? No, it, it doesn't open it up to including it, but it's there because in our conversation with the planning board, there was enough of a concern expressed by members of the planning board that there wasn't a clear enough distinction between wholesale and retail in the bylaw. So what Larry did and what we did collectively is we worked to come up with more meaningful definitions of the word retail and wholesale. The special permit, Mr. Shane, is only applicable for the wholesaling use not for retail. It, it would not be a permitted, the, the retail use would not be a permitted use even with the special permit. It's only wholesaling with storage. And the reason that that's there, and, and I, I can share with you my personal asides, which are, it does tend to be a little confusing, is because the bylaw was not really clear enough, at least in the opinion of a couple of members of the planning board, so we added that definition. But there's no, no provision in the bylaw which would allow a retail use of any kind under any circumstances. Thank you. Mr. DeVito. Yeah, just, I don't know whether it's you, Ernie, or Larry, but you know, I've been following this thing over the past few months, and I know there's been a lot of discussion at the planning board level with it. From my perspective, I just don't see a downside to this article. I mean, it, it, it's all positive. We, we, we sold that land on the anticipation of bringing businesses in. Here's an opportunity, albeit we had to make some adjustments to bring this business in, but I just don't see the downside, if there is one. So. Well, the, the downside, in, to be fair to, to the original intention of the, of the BP zone, was that if you could have a campus style, like, you know, the, the Silicon Valley kind of campus style where there's nothing but office buildings, it would be attractive, it would be something that the town would want to pursue. The problem is, is that the model for the market's going in the other direction, exactly. and exactly. we're not able to get those kinds of tenants to locate on this kind of large-scale place. So at this point in time, Mr. DeVita, my position would be that I personally agree with what you just said, <clears throat> and, and with, again, I don't want to speak for Larry, but Larry and I have been around a long time, and we understand each other. Zoning has to grow and has to adapt to reality. Times change. And, and in this particular case... You have case, to change with them. Excuse and, me for the No, that's okay. And, and again, my only point, and I want to make sure everybody understands, is this is a very, very narrow exception to the business park zone, and it would allow only upon the issuance of a special permit, which takes four affirmative votes from the regulatory agency. So the planning board's got to give us a supermajority vote. So the planning board's going to be intimately involved in anything that goes on there. So that's my, my whole argument. Mr. Chairman, are you looking for a motion? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah Jerry. Positive tax revenue for the town? Of course. Oh, oh sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Significant. That's why when I talked to Mr. Petnari, I said th those words yeah, were my exact really, words. Really? Those yeah. were my exact yeah, words to him, so. Well, that's what I was trying to yeah. because that went through my head. Yeah. And I said, oh, God, yeah. Well, plus, plus, plus. I'm, I agree with Mr. DeVita. I'll make a motion that we support this. Okay. Second. Second by Aldo. 
All in favor? We're recommending favorable. Favorable, yep. Recommending yep. favorable. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Unanimous. Well, peace. Good evening. And I have to hear this again twice, huh? You hear it in your sleep. Give us the short version. You're getting the long version. You're going to get the long version. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ernie. Have a good night. All right, Mr. Duncan, uh, let's move over to yours. Uh, Article 17. Would All of these are fairly simple yep. and almost self explanatory. Uh, 17 deals with uh, uh, allowing uh, employee parking in required front yards. Why the zoning bylaw doesn't allow you to put uh, or allow you to count parking spaces in a required front yard if they're employee parking. It doesn't allow for them to occur, but yet it would allow a parking lot for the public in a required front yard. So we couldn't figure out why that was okay. done that way. Uh, a car is a car. So that's what this change does. 17 would uh, get rid of that prohibition for uh, uh, employee parking in required yards. Makes no sense. For response, yeah. what, what's, give me an example of, of one that would fall into this. Well, in the uh, 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 industrial zones, in the IB zones, look at Waters, Waters Corp. <coughs> there are a number of parking spaces uh, that either are or could be in a required front yard, but you can't park employees there. Well, for Waters Corp, why else would you have the parking? So that affects how so I guess the, the sites are developed. Front yard is what the question. Is. A required front yard. What What is a front yard? A required. <laughs> I mean, I have a house and I know what my front yard is. <laughs> okay. A required front yard is the setback, depending upon what the zoning district is. It's 50 feet in, in the industrial zone right. from the street right. back to your yard. If you have a corner lot, you got two front yards. If you're totally surrounded by streets, you have four front yards. But, but from from as a planning and zoning point of view when when a company comes before you guys to get a permit to build a building and you go over parking requirements yes. w this is all included no well it is how do you distinguish an employee from a, a customer well that was part of the 27 spots because parking? they would designate normally they designate uh, employee parking so if it's not designated employee parking you could put it in a required yard there's still some setbacks but not the full building setback and that's the whole point of this amendment, because the requirement makes no sense. It never has. Uh, I wasn't here when it was put in, <laughs> or it wouldn't have happened. Yeah, sure. What is the definition of front yard? I, I just gave it to you. I, I still don't. 50, 50 it's, feet it's, from the it's, street it's, or from whatever the, street, the yeah. setback. Relative, relative to commercial property. It it's doesn't require any. It's a required front yard. It varies by zoning district. It's, it's measured from the street line something. back into the property. It's not referencing residential front yard. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It, that's just the definition of what the, it, you, we think of yard as grass. It, we're just talking about what the a setback is from setback the street. Exactly. The zoning setback requirement. Yeah. Yeah. You're Move making it way more complicated. Yeah. Move to refer to sponsor. Thank you. Thank you. Second to refer to Thank sponsor. Thank you. All those in favor to refer to sponsor? Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Uh, 25. 25. Yes. Uh, The uh, addition of verbiage so that uh, uh, a change of use on a property which requires a site plan review uh, is clearly specified in the bylaw. That's been a longstanding practice since I've been here. The changes of use uh, go through uh, uh, at least a waiver of site plan review with the planning board to authorize the change. The primary uh, uh, reason for requiring that review is to verify that there's adequate off-street parking for the new use uh, as compared to whatever the site was designed for. In many cases, we find that s sometimes proposed uses require way more parking than the site can, can provide, uh, or if the site could provide it, they haven't been built yet, so if there's going to be a change of use to that higher parking generator, then they uh, uh, add on to the parking lot. So it's primarily the reason for the, for the uh, review. This just clarifies and formalizes that longstanding uh, okay. situation. Second. Second by Jerry. All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, 28. <coughs> this is uh, to rezone the uh, 18 lots that lie between uh, Exchange Street and Fayette Street 
that basically run from Congress over to the uh, food pantry. And they would rezone it from the current CA, downtown central commercial zone, to OR, office residential. Right now, of those 18 parcels, I think 14 of them are residential, which means in the CA zone that they're in now, they're all nonconforming because our CA zone prohibits residential uses. The, uh, uh, it does. Oh, no. It doesn't. And, and uh, the, uh, the other uses that are there are churches, so uh, other than Warren Heller's law office, which would be uh, allowed either way. The Fonto building is there, Century 21 yeah. building, Consigli no, building is there. it's not there. there. I'm talking between Exchange Street, between Exchange and, and Fayette. Fayette, between Congress and Maine. No, Congress. food pantry and the parking lot, basically. Got it. Got it. The okay. food pantry back. Yeah, the food oh, pantry. To, the food okay. pantry to one. So it doesn't quite make it to Main Street. Okay. No. Correct. I know exactly where you are. Okay. Yeah, because those uses are commercial, commercial and that's what the CA so is there, zone is for. Is there any are there any financial repercussions to no. changing this? From CA to office residential. I have a motion to refer to sponsor okay. from Chuck. Second by Bob or Aldo. Doesn't change the tax. It doesn't change no. the, the tax. Zoning has no. nothing to do with taxes. Okay. Uh, Chuck and I was yeah, an Aldo. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Thank you. Uh, Thirty-three. Thirty-three um, adds a new section uh, for obstructions permitted in required yards. To clarify uh, fence heights, uh, over the last several years, we've changed a variety of, uh, of sections in the bylaw that one way or another uh, had dealt in the past with fences. Uh, but in all of those changes, fences kind of got left out, and there's no clear spot to look at. There's no one place now in the bylaw to look at to find out where you can put your fence, how high it is depending on where you're putting it, and this would fix that. That, that seems like a common thing offense that we haven't addressed before but well it had been addressed in multiple places yeah. okay but because of other changes as I say those those sections fences weren't at the top of the priority list in terms of focusing on them so they ended up uh, accidentally getting left out okay. Mr. Chair Bobby I was, quick, quick, awesome. I was just wondering yeah, if I got your next one. I'm sorry no I got my next. Yeah, go ahead. If, if I have a fence in my yard today Larry that's 10 feet <clears throat> And the new restriction is eight. Is that fence grandfathered? Depends on whether it's legal now or not. If 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 it's in a required front yard, it's probably too high unless you've okay. got a variance for it. Okay. But other aside from that, I didn't know if it was going to cause a lot of if it's illegal, for no. some homeowners. The purpose is to fix all of that. Okay. If it's a legal fence now, it's a legal it's fence. So you're legal technically not really changing anything. You're Correct. just consolidating. Correct. Okay. Uh, thank that was you. my question. Like, okay. Does that make sense? Oh, do you? I don't know. I, uh, the area that, that I live in um, was, has a covenant that there were no front yard fences allowed at all. Good. <laughs> <laughs> stop people from doing yeah, that's it. That's why he lives there. Yeah. Well, it but, didn't stop people from doing it. Yeah, but municipalities don't enforce private covenants. Right. Municipalities enforce zoning bylaws. Right. And whether they break your covenants or not, so this they're is not going to hear from us unless they. Okay, I just want to know. know separate and apart. The zoning. So they've got to take down that electrified right. fence. <laughs> Keep it on your friends. Keep your friends on. Oh, just one side. Tie together. No, that's an exception. One tie doesn't. No, it's not a fence. Yeah. There are other provisions for the that. goats in and There are clear sight provisions on on corner lots at intersections, so you don't block the vision of the motoring public. So to reiterate what Larry says, this technically is not changing any laws, just tightening up where the bylaw information for fencing is. So. Sponsor. Chuck, referred to sponsor. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Jeff. All in favor? Thank you very much, Larry. Thank Appreciate it. Thank you for Please, no problem. Me. Anytime. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate the delay, but come forward. Come hither. Oh. Chief. Deputy Chief. You want a toy, because Al's not here, so I had to say it, okay? <laughs> All right, talk to us about your truck. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members for having me tonight to talk about the ladder truck. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mark Nelson, I'm the Deputy Fire Chief, also a resident of the town. Uh, first, I just want to mention that the Chief and I are sensitive to the, 
how much money uh, this actually is going to cost. $1.1 million is a significant number. Um, we understand this, and that's why we didn't take this article, um, this, uh, this purchase lightly. We did look at three options, uh, obviously to purchase new, and then we looked at refurbishment, which is basically a reconditioning. One second, Mark. Everything that Mark's going to discuss has all been put up on the, the Google Drive for everyone, so in case anyone didn't know that, you can pull up all the specs and details about everything that Mark's going to talk about tonight. So, sorry. Sure. And um, so we, we looked into refurbishment, which, which is basically a reconditioning and also continued use of the current truck. <coughs> In exploring these options, we examined current standards, uh, National Fire Protection Association standards also the American Public Works Association uh, scoring matrix for vehicles. We had to go buy something, um, so we looked at the NFPA, and it basically says after 15 years that the truck should be in a reserve status. We don't have that capability where we only have one. We can do that with our engines, not with our, not with our ladder truck. Um, it also says that after 25 years that the truck be retired. Um, we're now at 20. Truck is 20 this month. With the APWA scoring matrix, we wanted to plug our vehicle in and determine how many points uh, that it would garner. And, and basically, that came out to 29 points conservatively. Um, we, we scored as low as we could possibly take the truck, and we wanted to see uh, where it would fit against, against their, their point schedule. 28 points in their, in their matrix. Uh, means that the vehicle should receive uh, consideration for immediate replacement. <coughs> like I said, we scored 29. I could score it anywhere from 29 to 33 points, depending on how aggressive we want to be with their with their uh, uh, categories. So we looked at those. Um, we we visited uh, the local dealer Bulldog and Hopkinton to talk about reconditioning the current truck, and. And basically, the owner said, you don't want to put that kind of money into that 20-year-old truck. Uh, you're, you're not going to get the value. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's still a 20-year-old truck. I said, OK, cross that off the list. He said, well, how about running the truck as is? It's a well-maintained truck. Um, it has its annual test. Uh, it's, been, it, it's been a good piece of equipment for the last 20 years. So we put that up against purchasing new. The, the problem with the truck right now is it's not safety, it's reliability. Uh, we're getting to the point where we're not spending an excessive amount of money. I think I, I have it in the packet of a little bit over 16000 average for the last three years. Um, but we're looking at reliability. Last week we had a subcommittee meeting. I, I think you're aware of it. We had a subcommittee meeting. Um, that day the truck went out of service. It went out of service for what we thought was a severe issue. It ended up being relatively minor. Um, one of the wheel, the tire rims, one of the wheels split. It caused a noise that, that mimicked a drivetrain problem. So the truck went out of service. Four rims later, it was back in service. However, while it was out of service, that night we had a house fire. I didn't have a ladder truck. I had to call for mutual aid. Um, Hopedale, you know, in, in us, with Hopedale and Milford, we reciprocate back and forth. Um, they were able to provide a ladder truck, which was, which was great. Um, but I would have liked to have had my own ladder truck at that fire. Um, probably a few weeks before that, uh, we were in the drill yard doing some training. The truck was off. Went to start it. It wouldn't start. Um, several batteries and uh, a starter adjustment later, because we had corrosion on the solenoid of the starter, um, the truck was repaired. But it's, again, an, another reliability thing, things you can't really predict. Um, I know the truck doesn't appear old, doesn't appear worn. It does have <coughs> corrosion. You know, it's it's been through whatever 19 <coughs> winters. Um, things are starting to go bad for the truck electrically. Um, you know, the phantom noises and things like that. We can we can deal with those. Uh, the 51,000 miles doesn't seem excessive, but it does have 10,000 or approaching 10,000 engine hours. Um, you have to assign a value to engine hours. And, and talking to the dealership, they said, well, you, you should really on a fire truck put 35 miles uh, per engine hour. I said, that's kind of high. That's, that's about 345,000 miles. 
I said, I got I to gotta tone it down a little bit. I said, I'll be conservative. I'll say, assign it 20, 20 miles per hour for every engine hour because there's high idle involved in that when you're running the aerial out of the bed. Um, it's a lot of weight. And there's low idle. So if I assign even 20 miles per hour um, to the, to the 9,863 hours that we have, um, it comes out to just shy of 200,000 miles. That's the condition of the truck right now. Uh, I can't sit before you and say that it's an unsafe truck, uh, because if it was, it would be out of service and I would be dealing with the issue at hand. But we have one. We protect a, a densely constructed downtown, a major hospital, six hotels, schools, um, we need to have a reliable piece of, uh, of equipment, and like I said, we only have one. We need it to be one that, that, that's ready, and, and that's what we're looking at right now. All right, Mark. Uh, before I open it up to everyone, I just a, a couple points. I, I just want to say that this ladder truck has been on our radar for a long time. Uh, we even went ahead and created a, a special uh, stabilization fund specifically to address this. So I do have to say the chiefs have done due diligence on, on getting this on our radar and allowing us to plan financially for this, uh, which is the right way to do it. Uh, secondly, I just want you to tell everyone how long it takes once you order this truck for the truck to come. Yes. The truck has a one-year build. Um, that's pretty standard. So once it's approved, um, well, if you give it favorable action and I present it next month at town meeting, I meet with the dealer. Um, we've, we've more or less chosen one. We know what we want. Um, we would spec it out off a of state bid so it doesn't have to go out, go out to bid. We can pick the manufacturer off the state bid that we want. And once it's approved, and, and it will be before January because that's when the price increase comes, um, we're looking at maybe next December, December of 17. Okay, so that's just something I wanted everyone to understand, that if the, the, we have the truck now that is showing signs of an issue, we're talking about 14 months before we get our new truck. So I think everyone should take that into account when, when thinking about this. Okay. Uh, two quick questions. Uh, does a, a piece of equipment of that age, does it in any way affect the fire rating of the town for someone like fire insurance for your home or something? I'm not sure about the age. At I'd have to look that up. one time it did. Um, I don't know if it still does. I know the capacity of the engines do and how many engines that you have. I know not having so a lot of truck would affect the... It uh, could very well be a relationship <laughs> there. And the second thing, uh, I guess that's that's all I really want to ask. Mark? Deputy ask. Chief, I, I just have a couple of questions. First, I'd like to say <laughs> that, that um, the reports that you submitted as backup from Mount Lebanon and, and the other town in California were, were extensive and, and very well uh, written. Um, and, and they bring to the, to the point of 20 years, between 15 and 20 years to take the truck out of service. My questions are basic. You know, you told us how many miles a truck has, how many hours it's run, how many fire calls a year does it make, typically? I mean, it doesn't go out on every call, right? No, it does not. Right. No, it does not. It's a, it's a, it's staffed by one person. Um, it runs on anything from alarms to reported fires. It sometimes medicals. Uh, it, it depends. It depends uh, because the truck <clears throat> sometimes becomes transportation for that one firefighter I have left to run the third call that we're that we're dealing with at the time. We're not responding honestly, to a lot of fires a year. The truck's not operating at a lot of fires a year. We happen to have two last week. Uh, before that, we hadn't had any, or hadn't had a fire for a couple of months. So, yes, I mean, that's, you know, that speaks to good prevention and, and, and um, you know, that, that's what we want. We don't want to have the fires. I don't want to come across the wrong way. But um, how many runs is, is it doing? I know the town itself, uh, we're approaching 5,000. Know, if we're doing 60% or 50% fire runs, it's going on those. The, when, I mean, I had a bunch of other questions that I, I'm not going to ask, but I do have one major one. When you go out to purchase a new truck, um, assuming that town meeting agrees, do you present the design criteria to the, to the manufacturer, say, look, I want this truck to run 30 years? I want it to run uh, 150,000 miles because the two reports that you submitted 
Um, they talked about taking trucks out of service over 100,000 miles and putting it into reserve. Um, they, so, but the NFPA says, well, if it's over 15 years old, you gotta take it out of service. So this is a self-fulfilling prophecy or, or, or planned obsolescence. And I don't think that's fair to the fire department because I think this committee supports the fire department and wants everybody in the fire department to be safe and respond to all fires and, and make sure that all of our houses don't go down. And we've supported the fire department since I've been on this committee. So I don't have a problem supporting a new truck when, when it, it's right to do. I, I just have a problem with the manufacturers designing planned obsolescence. Because they know NFPA says 15 years take it out of service. So we'll design it for 15 years. But it doesn't have to be 15 years. If you looked at the numbers you submitted to us, and, and I understand that a, 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 a big truck has different requirements than, than a, a car, but it's about a year and a half's worth of operation, in theory, if you take the number of hours and the number of miles driven and on a 20-year truck, and that's like, what's the return on investment here, a year and a half? Doesn't make much sense. So my recommendation is when you go to spec a new truck, see if you can't get the manufacturer to put in a little bit better parts so we can get a little bit better use or longer use out of the truck and still make it safe and, and have a good truck. Yeah, there's no and, question. And I, I, I had the same thing as when I'm looking at the years. I hate someone telling me that this is how long a product is supposed to last. Right. Well, I have TVs that last three months and I have TVs mm -hmm. that last 10 years. Don't tell me how long a product. That's why I, I err more on the side of the mileage where when you start introducing the idling time, it's not the 56, was it 56? Fit, whatever, 51,000 miles that the, that the vehicle has on it. Right. To me, it's the yeah. idling time, and even your 20 hours per idling hour and all that kind of stuff, and you do the math, I mean, that's a significant load on a truck like that, and that particularly caught my eye. So, And, and I agree, Mr. Chairman. And, but the other thing is that when you rated the truck for the number of points, the biggest issue or the biggest number of points is the, no, the, the age of the truck. So if you, take, if you take the truck and say it's really three-year-old truck because of all the other stuff, the numbers come way down. Sure. And, and then you talk about, well, how long is it out of service? What percentage of time is it out of service? What's it cost to be out of service? And, and even doing that math, it says, we shouldn't buy a new truck right now, in theory. Um, but I understand the concern, and so maybe the next truck we buy will have better longer life and, and be better at it, and we should be better at it. <clears throat> If I may, the, the truck that we're um, that we're looking to purchase would, is is considered a severe service truck. Um, that's the type of, of chassis. Um, they only build the aerial one way. It's only a heavy duty aerial. Um, there aren't options with that where there are with other manufacturers. But the cab itself, um, the motor or the engine will have more horsepower, that sort of thing. So we're we're trying to look at that, and we feel we need to replace it, but. I, like I said, I can't sit here and say that the truck isn't going to serve us. I, I can't predict. It, the 14-month, the you, know, the you know, delay on, on, on from purchase to, you know, picking up from the dealership is, is one of my biggest apprehensions as well, is that if it's starting to have issues that, you know, if we wait till it has a severe issue and, you know, we're waiting 14 months for a ladder truck, that's a lot of mutual or well, whatever. No, you'd end up renting one. Yeah, then. exactly. Yeah, we just take the one back from hockey. And we <laughs> talked about that too. Uh, yeah. The renting is anywhere from five to ten thousand a month. Yeah. On a rent. That's no, it's not the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to get a good truck. But when you go out for the for the design criteria this time, I would see if we can get, you know, if it's worth a hundred thousand dollars to to this committee for the truck to last five years longer. Okay, because of wear and tear. Um, I'm not a truck guy. That's your, that's your business. And for the public, I don't think we've even mentioned that it's $1.1 $1 .1 million is the amount of money that you're, that you're looking for. And that should be no issue. I mean, with everything that you've spec'd out, equipment, everything else, you're not going to come back six months and say, we forgot to buy hoses or whatever. That should be sufficient. Okay. You can move everything over from this truck to the new one? That's what we had heard. There were some things that you were going to be able to move over. Some things can, can move. There, are gonna be, there is going to be a lot of new equipment. But that's part of the 1.1? 1 .1? Yes. Or are you going to do that in your budget? Yes. That's, One, part, that's part of the 1.1. 1.1, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1, we'll get a turnkey truck. That's what we're looking to do. Um, and with this new truck, if it, um, we're looking to have a pump, uh, a 2,000 gallon per minute pump, where our current truck does not have a pump. So basically, it becomes a yeah, fire engine also. Yeah. Right. 
um, that I can use if needed. And you had a price increase in January. What? I know you can't guess, you don't have a crystal ball, but you must have seen usually, do these things go up 5%, 10%? Four to seven, um, and yeah. what the what the dealer's telling me is they haven't had a big increase in a while, so. <laughs> uh, but 7% on $1.1 million is a <laughs> stand by, you know? So. You just, if he doesn't know, he won't know until January. I mean, That's why I want to move it along. No question, and you talk about that the price can go up another 100, you know, $150,000 by waiting until after January. One, one other quick question. The other, the other things that the um, these two other reports brought out was a very comprehensive replacement repair um, requirement. Um, it, it was a very good bible, if you will, on how to maintain, what to look for, um, what life, age of life is on some different trucks. I would like to see if we can't get together as, as a group with the fire department, the police department, the highway department, and the parks department and come up with a comprehensive um, vehicle plan, okay, on, on, you know, so we, we can plan five years ahead saying, okay, you're gonna get a new pumper truck in five years or 10 years. Or, I mean, that's what these guys are doing. And I think it's important for our long range planning to start coming up with something like that. And so my recommendation is, and I'll ask to the chairman, yep. we get a group together as a yep, subcommittee no, and maybe deal with that. Bobby? You stole my thunder, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. <clears throat> I uh, was going to make the point that in the past we have purchased vehicles, and then six months after we receive them, we come in for another request. And the way the yep. uh, article is written, it calls for purchasing and equipping. So let's do our homework, make sure we get it all at once. and. Um, Seeing as how you stole my thunder, maybe I'll take this opportunity to make a favorable recommendation on this side. Can I just hear from Jeff real quick? First? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I agree with Mark. That excellent report. Very, very. I, I thought all the options were covered well. What happens to the old truck? It's a good question. The the old truck. Uh, there are a few options. Um, probably a couple that you don't want to hear about. Uh, one being scrap value. Um, roughly 13 cents a pound comes out to about 7,600 dollars. Yeah. Keep it um, from the rage. I did check. I did check with with. Um, I called a couple of dealers. I received one phone call back. Uh, they'll take it on consignment, and they estimate anywhere from thirty to fifty thousand dollar value. You say wrong color. Doesn't have a pump. Doesn't have a tank, and it's twenty years old. So, and I talked to Bellingham Fire today because they just went through this process, and they re for a similar uh, ladder truck. That they uh, that they replaced it was it was 94. They just got a uh, 2016 uh, for a similar piece of equipment. They got 15,000 for their truck. So that's it. So uh, we're not going to get rich. She <coughs> for uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, it's hard to believe. Sorry, again. Just a quick question. Uh, will this truck be uh, a 2016 when you order it, or 2017 when it's delivered? I will check with the, with uh, the fire apparatus company about that's that. I don't want to I don't want to hear that. Oh, we got a used truck. For new, new, uh, you know, <laughs> no, I won't be used. No, 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 no question. Absolutely right. All right, Mr. Demeter, is your uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, motion still second. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh um, I'm sorry, Mike. Like this, this is sort of a context question. You almost touched on, I think, with Bellingham. Uh, the towns that you provide mutual aid to with the with your ladder truck, do they have comparable ladder capacity, or is our truck pulled out of the Milford for mutual aid purposes? Pretty, you know, is that a high percentage of your usage? Our truck going mutual your truck aid? going to mutual. Our truck does not go mutual aid often. Our engines go more than more than our ladder truck would go. It would have to be something significant for the for the ladder truck to respond. It's not a it's not a typical first um, first uh, first truck for mutual aid, typically. So it's rare, it rarely goes on mutual aid. It goes less than the engines. <laughs> yes, um, it's 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 not a usual occurrence. To, the to other towns the that you do mutual aid, they pretty much all have comparable ladder trucks? Yes. Yes. Uh, or they can aid into Milford as well? Sure. And, yeah. and when we go to uh, what would be a second alarm fire, we do bring in, that's when we start bringing in um, neighboring ladder trucks. Okay. Great. All right. Is the motion uh, favorable? Motion. Second by Aldo. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Buy your toy. Thank you.
Thank you. Thanks a lot, Chief. Appreciate you coming in. Toy Toy Rev 2. All right, Park, sorry, guys. We slipped a couple people in front of you. Come on up. Parks. It was like the deli counter. They grabbed numbers before you. I'm sorry. Anybody going to sit in the front seat? Just like in school. All the microphones were up here, guys. <laughs> so either move two seats forward or move two microphones back. <laughs> One of the two. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You have the brains of the office. Oh, geez, that's scary. Finally admitted it. All right. Uh, quickly, uh, we weren't going to have you come in for the article because we had talked about uh, uh, Article 8, excuse me. Uh, because we had uh, discussed this obviously at uh, length with the long-term capital uh, plan uh, subcommittee. So, uh, Al, if you can just talk about the lawnmower for a minute. Yeah, this has been on the plan for quite some time. Uh, it's not just a lawnmower. And again, on the FinCom page, the full proposal with pictures, uh, this includes, it's an octopus. You know, it's one of those riding things with all the arms to blow leaves, to trim bush, to do all sorts of things. Does it hit a home run? Probably, for 30 grand it should, but um, basically the one we have now, it's finally the deck is, I guess, leaning. It's uh, everything, yeah, it's just old. It's just old. It's had its time, this has been in the plan for quite some time, it's a multi-use, so I call it the octopus. It seems to have all these contraptions. It's not just, you know, 30 grand, you get more than just a lawnmower. So the committee went through it, um, we looked at the alternatives. Mike actually provided me with more up-to-date pictures that are now on the website. So if you want to look at the actual specs of the beast, what it can do and its uses, we're going now to every, um, every item on the capital uh, list. We're asking for five basic questions to be answered, and the Parks Department did answer them, put them up so that we can see not only what we're buying, but now why are we buying it, what alternatives are there, what did we go through? So the subcommittee recommended favorable. Uh, before, I, before I open it up, uh, do you have any, I mean, anything else to add besides what Al just... No, they don't serve us well, and this will serve us better. Perfect. All right, uh, I'd like to open it up. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, what are we doing with the old uh, tractor mower? It's, it's Sa saving money for repairs. Yeah. yeah. Is it, will it be held, held for... We may use it for pots, yeah. Pots, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. And then we'll auction it. Okay. But you don't expect to get anything for it no. if you auction no, it. No, to get 100 bucks, you know. Yeah. Well, it's worth more in pots to us than pots. All right. Do I have a motion for Article 8? Favorable. 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 Second. Jerry, all those in favor? Excellent. All right, the other issue that uh, we wanted to talk to you guys about, it came up at our last meeting, not our last meeting, the meeting before last, is we had always talked about uh, that this 200000 that we were going to allocate for a turf field. Uh, we've done it twice. Uh, we hope to do it again at this town meeting. Uh, the question came up is that now we're starting to talk about some pretty sizable amounts. We're talking about 600000 now. Um, and people started to look for more specifics. So I wanted to have you guys come in, talk about basically what our need for fields are, because the first thing it, someone said is, well, do we really need this? So that's why I wanted you guys to come in, just to give us, you know, kind of, uh, the layout of uh, the field situation that currently exists because obviously with Woodland Field going off and coming on with the new field and that kind of stuff that people are questioning about uh, you know our needs for fields and like I said it's 600,000 we're starting to get to some pretty sizable numbers and we're getting close to where we are going to pull the trigger on something so people are want to get an idea you know what your plans are and we're not looking for specifics yeah. where the field's yeah. going to be that type of stuff but we, you know the 30,000 foot on where we stand with fields and what you might be looking for in the fields in the future so we've on our list for several years that additional field we, we're just getting in and our fields are just getting demolished we're, we have no time to rest our fields uh, in the last several years we've increased our sports we have brought lacrosse on so just for example third week in March we start all the high school in the spring you got lacrosse you got um, boys and girls lacrosse, baseball, softball, and then come April, you have youth soccer. 800 kids everywhere. We don't have time, uh, any space for anybody. It's just, it's really, it's really difficult. Then you get the summer of short growing season, and then the fall, uh, we go with high school soccer, youth soccer, we the softball program. Uh, there's just absolutely no time to, to rest the existing fields. 
and I, we just feel the turf field is just just essential. And the one we get at the high school is awesome. The one that's going to go on Woodland uh, would be awesome, but we just one more would really help the situation. We can rest some things. The kids aren't playing in mud. As you know, and I, football comes in the fall too. And as you know, everything goes till Thanksgiving. And then if we start in March, nothing gets rest. Everything is, you're playing on mud in March through the year. It, we have no, we do our best to seed it, but there's no growing season for us right now. So we just need to be able to rest some fields and, uh, and manage it better. Actually, before I get to mine, let's open it up for discussion. Does anyone have any questions for them? Yeah. yeah. Um, where would you propose this turf? We, well, the, the discussion has been we're just looking for a turf, and then it'll, yeah, go ahead. Could I chip it? We started this when we told the Parks Department with the extra investment in the youth center and all, we didn't have 2.1 million to do the um, tradesmen. What we suggested to them is we, as long as the need remains, we start putting away 200,000, and until we get to the 60, 80 percent mark, we don't discuss, you know, okay. obviously, we don't want to get into the politics of, I want Town Park. No, I want behind the high school. No, I want here. It's really more a matter of, is the need still growing for fields? <coughs> if it is, then wherever the best place to put a field is should service the community. And once we get up to 60 or 80 percent, then we'll ask the Parks Department to start their due diligence you know, and, and that was why I started the, yeah. the whole idea. Yeah. And that's why we had saying at this point now, with if we are going to do another 200000 this year and get it up to six hundred, we are now at the level that we had talked yes. about previously, yes. that we were going to be completely vague about all those other details until we reached a certain yeah. point. Well, after this particular town meeting, we're going to reach that certain point. So we just right. obviously wanted to start the conversation and get more into our yeah. specifics on that. Just one thing I, I did forget to mention was Woodland's great. We'll get a turf field up there. But before we had about 125,000 square feet, of usable space and and with the turf field we'll have about 60 62 thousand so we're still even though we're gaining a turf field, we're still losing um a considerable amount of space because the whole soccer pro uh, a lot of the soccer program could go up to woodland and use it and there just won't be the area right now and we're just we're squeezing too many people in two small places and, and again mike without debating yeah. field yeah. size yeah. And yeah yeah exactly the real question that we comes need. to you is yes do we still need it, and why? He's got yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have I have one more thing too. So, uh, from a sports per, sports person in town, involved with many youth programs, um, we are really building our middle school programs. So, and with with what comes with the middle school programs is more field space and more field availability. So, um, just just another field itself. We're we're starting. We've already started the soccer program. We're looking to do lacrosse. We're, we're looking to do field hockey. Um, and, and one of the other things that I also look at is playable football fields, playable soccer fields in Milford. Um, we really only have one that's underneath the lights and that's fitted for an entire football program or a, or a full-scale soccer field. Um, so the addition of another one of those would really um, help with, you know, with the situation that we're in now. We're redoing Fino Field. Fino Field in the past, once we lost Woodland, was used for um, soccer and football because we didn't have the accessibility of it. So, but what happened to Fino Field is it's never come back from the damage that it suffered. It really hasn't. Um, and where you know, it, you know, traditionally, as, a, as any Milford person was, that was a baseball field. Uh, we'd like to really get it back to there, and we'd, we're trying to do that right now. Um, but you know, it, we're not opposed to maybe having night games there, but. We're really trying to limit the practice that's on that field to really kind of make it come back to life. And we just haven't been able to, you know, just like for any other field, whether it's the annex, you know, Fino itself, um, the high school fields, they just take a beating. And it's and the turf field would alleviate all this. Part of the due diligence we expect is that if we go with the, the third installment, when we send you off to do the real evaluation, lights or no lights, it's always easy to say yes, yeah. lights. But yeah, I mean, we would lights ask for an analytical light, view. Lights would obviously yeah. add hours and hours of practice time, but I don't. You know, that's something we'd have to look into because number one, I think it would have to deal with where the location of the new turf field would be, and two, is it accessible to have lights there? Well, and again, it's just a matter of do the study to say the lights will cost us thirty-two dollars and eighty cents, and we would get so many more hours and yeah. so much more use, so that is part of the evaluation. 
we look at with lights, without any options. You know, Mike, you had mentioned that making a field wider may be able to get us more 6v6. Yes, absolutely. Turn them sideways. this way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So again, look at not just a field, but if instead of costing us 900000 it cost us 960 or 980 yeah. and you got an extra field or so on it, you know, just bring us the data if this yeah. goes just the way forward. you can Just the way you can line a turf field and the way you could, you know, set it all up. I mean, it's that would obviously depend on your needs. Mark? Um, you, you mentioned... Um, or Al mentioned talking about putting fields under lights. Well, we have a field under lights now. How often is it used at night? Uh, other than, uh, oh, wait, other than for a Friday night football game, how often is it used by the soccer kids to play at night? Um, the, it, well, just an example. I mean, I'd have to find out from the high school that's more of them, but i got to say, it, it, especially during the fall and during the spring, spring it is used every single night. Yeah. Especially during football season and soccer season. Right now, it's used every night. It's a varsity girls softball uh, soccer teams out there practicing now. When I just left, so the lights come on because the you know it's not getting darker earlier, obviously. Right. So, well, um, I mean, Woodland will have lights as well, so that you pick up another whole field, not for football necessarily, but you pick up a whole soccer field, and or a whole lacrosse field, and or a whole. Everybody shaking their head, no. No. Yes. My understanding is yes. it's the answer yeah. to that question. The answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's yes. That's an yes for soccer, for field hockey, and for, for lacrosse. Uh, lacrosse, yeah. boys and okay. girls. And, the and practice is, football. Football, no. Right, not it's, for a, a and game. That's all been affirmed by the athletic director. Who right. sat so there's a whole other field you're picking up with lights. So that that is a definite yes. What okay. what I would what about Plains Park? Um, the no lights at Plains Park. What's what about putting lights at Plains Park? You never do lights at Plains Park because of the liner. You can't dig because of the what? A liner, liner. underneath. Right. Yeah. Isn't that the same I'm reason sorry. we can't ah, turf Plains Park? Correct. The Correct. And that's the same reason why we don't have a full size field down there. It was because of the configuration right. and the yeah. drainage. Right, right. Um, right. And, the elevation. and the elevation. It, it is what it is. All the, all the trash was just covered. Not. And really. again, Mike, yeah. if it turns yeah. out. Yeah. Putting a field here and putting lights there is the best alternative. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll do that. Again, that's why yeah. wide open. Yeah. I mean, because I, we do have a need. That's what we're trying to get across right. today. And we, and we, we and, understand that. And we had said right there, beginning, we did yeah. not want specifics. Right. We didn't want that. You guys did exactly what we told you to do. So, right. and we said as we get closer, we we're going to get more specific. So everything you did is exactly what the subcommittee, when I was on there, and Al still yeah. does do. Is you've done perfectly. So, but we're now to the point where yeah. we got to do it. Okay. So. Does anybody else have a question for them? Okay. Thank you very much for coming in, guys. And, you guys. and your subcommittee chair will be in touch with you about getting that together, as well as the long-term capital, about okay. putting that plan together and that kind of stuff. Thank you. That's it? Okay. How long do you think you'll be? <laughs> Two minutes? I know I'm 15 minutes late for you guys. I'm sorry. Can I sneak Zach in just to get him home to his family? It's really quick. What about Thursday night football? <laughs> Article 24 that would be as long as Aldo talks. I know. I was going to say. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, last night we had, we had this on last night, Article 24, about the payment for Woodland. And I did not want to uh, do it last night because Aldo wasn't here. Uh, because I think Aldo, uh, you know, being the chairman of that committee along with Jonathan Bruce and the other committee members and the great job that they did up at Woodland deserved a little praise. So uh, for that sake, I, I asked that we could do it tonight. And Zach was nice enough to come back again tonight. He did this for you, Aldo. <laughs> <laughs> so I got Zach, a lot done while I was waiting to get uh, article, <laughs> article 24. All right. So, so we, we've been talking about this for a long time, so there's no surprises here. And uh, I'm very impressed with everybody along the way. Everyone's been doing a great job. And um, we had been talking about projections to this day for probably four years now, and we are here today. And uh, very proud to say that we are here, and we are um, significantly under budget. Aldo will probably talk to that a little bit. However, um, there is still one final square up. If everyone recalls, we wanted to keep it to 28 million for bonding, of which we did. We also anticipated a significant bond premium, which we did also receive. And at the last annual town meeting, we had that applied to the project, which also reduced um, authorization to bond. At this time, um, given 
the amount under budget and given the uh, level of reimbursement from the MSBA, we're anticipating around a $1 million final appropriation. Um, that is designed to be a little high because um, it's still not done yet. There always could be that what if situation as well as uh, final figures from the MSBA as well. So that one million as of now probably could be more like 700,000. So we're, we're purposely leaving 300,000 there as um, a fluff, if you will. And that's gonna serve two purposes. One, exactly what I just said in the event that um, things have changed or the MSBA um, does not reimburse something. They do disallow certain items and thus far it's been really, really good. They have not done that very much. But at the tail end, when you're looking at contingency costs and all that, it kind of gets a little complicated and um, we should anticipate that there will be a few things that probably will be disallowed. The second real reason as well is just the way the MSBA um, turns over their final payment. It probably will not be until after FY17, which means that we will more than likely have a deficit in our capital project. So at that point, we can either go out and borrow money because I have to have my deficit squared up at that time, especially capital projects, or if it does come in favorable the way I anticipate it to do so, would basically be using our own funds to um, ensure that we do not have a deficit balance um, because it's an appropriation that we are doing and not the result of bonding. We can take that money back after. So once all the dust settles and we do receive that last reimbursement from the MSBA, final costs are done, yada, yada, yada. If there is a remaining balance that could be either closed out like I normally sponsor at the annual town meeting, or it can be repurposed to another capital project of which there are a few on the books right now, and I'm sure there's more to come. So that's where we're at now. I don't know if you wanted to Basically, talk a little bit. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I spoke with Zach, uh, Zach is looking, his article is talking about $1 million. Right now we're $2.1 million below budget. Wow. So um, we're comfortable with what Zach is doing here. Uh, we're close to the finish line. But as Zach said, uh, I would not, there's always the potential there's a problem. But we've gotten the majority of it. The old building is down, the land is cleared. They're in process now of putting the base in for the uh, turf field. We have a few uh, items that we're, that we're still chasing, but uh, with 1.1, 1 1.1 it, it, 1 .1 is, uh, well, 2.1 is the non-committed money. Every, we've already, whatever we have out there uh, that we know we're going to do has already been money, it's already been committed to that. So there's, there's 2.1 million, Zach said a million. Are we comfortable but with the 1.1? Yes, we can handle that. And um, hopefully when we do our final report, the majority of that extra 1.1 will still be available uh, at that time. So basically, uh, we don't have any problem with, uh, with Zach's article. Excellent. And that, and that pretty much finishes up, you know, the biggest project this town has, I think, ever <laughs> taken up. Yeah. And Aldo, I, I've said it before to, to many people on television and in public and at dinner and everywhere I can, what an unbelievable job that you and Jonathan and that committee did to, to create a building. And if any of you have not had a chance to get up and see it, uh, hopefully the invitations we get out, you got to get up to see it. And it's, it's breathtaking. And it's an environment that our children will thrive in. And I think it's something that this town deserves and they made that vision come to reality. And once again, Aldo, I cannot thank you enough for your work and uh, the town appreciates it. I would it. just like to, to uh, add that Zach mentioned something. It's actually been a very effective team that has done this, particularly from the financial perspective. We had all the help we've needed from the school department, particularly through their business people, putting together the, the warrants, putting together the checks. Zach has been able to track it down and we really haven't been much more than a month behind on our reimbursements. Oh, it's and, been incredible. Uh, <laughs> and that's because Great. Zach gets what he needs when he needs it, and the, the uh, business department puts it out. We have our warrants, and but it is definitely, I can't emphasize enough, it's been a team operation. Yeah. And without 
everybody doing what they needed to do, we probably might not have been quite as successful as Great. we have been. But let's not pat each other on the back just yet. Not just yet. Let's mm -hmm. wait until we do the final report <laughs> yeah. to the town meeting, and then if there's any reason to pat ourselves on the back, then we'll do it. Then. There you go. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Aldo, take the next nine years, recharge your batteries, because there's a new school. <laughs> I was just going to say, again. <laughs> I, I've already, really, I, I've already, so, Aldo. I've already <laughs> said that Aldo and Jonathan are going to be uh, the permanent nine members years of from the now, uh, we'll be calling building you committee. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, yep. if I may, just one, yep. just one more comment just to really put it in perspective here. If everyone recalls, this is like five years in the making, and I was sitting in this very seat, and when we originally did, we, we always try to do worst-case scenario projections, and at that time, we had $34 million of anticipated bonding yep. here at 28. That's it's incredible. Yep. <laughs> incredible. It took a lot of work. It did. Do I have a motion? I'll move, Mr. Chair. Mark? Anybody else? Second. Second for a favorable recommendation. Second by Jeff. All those in favor? Great work by everybody. Good job. Thank, Thank you. Exactly. Appreciate it. Sorry, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, come on. Zach is good. It's really good. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda, the Army... Uh, Armory <laughs> renovation. <laughs> it used to be Army. Um, Army... You know what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm Article right. 5. Right. The Youth Center. The Youth Center. Youth Center. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Brian. Yeah. All right. Uh, Article 5 is, the, is uh, the first one on there. And that one, um, sorry, get down there. That is the repair of the heating system. So if you guys That's can just kind of system, yeah. just let us know. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, uh, just, just by way of background, when, when we started the project, there was an evaluation of the heating system, and it was recommended, you know, by the architects that we should replace the whole heating system. Um, the cost would have been upwards of half a million dollars. So the uh, furnace itself was projected to have another 10-year lifespan, so the committee opted not to do that. And what we did was... Um, struggle through the existing heating system and also repair a lot of the steam lines uh, throughout the uh, and the radiators throughout the building. So we've done the, fi the second last final repair, the, the second last repair, um, putting in um, two uh, steam traps uh, in the basement and we think by way of the architects and the engineer that that's going to fix it. And it, the problem was that there was water coming out at various spots of the pipes, and they were basically chasing that and, and, and you know, putting valves in at different spots. They've chased it all the way down, and they think that the repairs that were done are going to do it. We're not going to know for sure until they turn the system on, which should be sometime around the middle of this month. And if we turn the system on and it works like they think, there's no need for this article. If they turn the system on and there's still some leaking at the pipes, there's one more repair that they can do, and it's about $25,000. So it's really a precautionary article that we're putting on there. We're hoping that we don't have to use it, but that's where we're at with the system. Um, this repair for the 25000 how much time does that gain us? Is this a small Band-Aid on a big problem? What? You oh, know. no, no, I, I, no, no. The, I mean, is this permanently going to fix the problem? Or? Well, yeah, uh, permanently. Oh, of course, I, I apologize. It, uh, of course not permanently. Through the, we should say through the life of the furnace. Yeah. It's projected to go through the life of the furnace. Okay. Because I, I was bored, I guess, and I watched our old finance committee meetings, and we had one on, on May 13th of 2014, in which Marcello and... I apologize, the other gentleman. Was it Marty? Yes, I think the it was. The architect, Marty, yes. Marty Crash. We're in here, and Phil asked him the question, point blank. He asked him, is the HVAC going to be, and exactly what you said, Brian, it's not good with, with the piping, and it's not good with the radiators, and we need to fix them, and that will be part of the $5 million. But he said the boiler was absolutely fine. He didn't say absolutely fine. He said it was in very good shape. What happened in two years that it went from very good shape to we have we've had band-aids of problems. So that's where I kind of wanted the, to. The, the boil is not the issue. That the point of origin of the heat is not the issue. Right. 
that's not where any of these repairs are going. These repairs are going throughout the system of the piping. Because he looked at that, though, and, and that's why, and Phil even came back, and he even asked him, he said, so you're saying that the HVA system and electrical system and everything is going to be completely fine once we're done with this project. And everyone who sat in front of there, which uh, Marcello and... and Not Marty Crash. Marty, thank yeah, you. Yeah. They said, absolutely. So that's where I just, is there any repercussions? I mean, can you go back to the architect and say, hey, you told us everything was going to be fine, and well, now we have issues. So yeah, Again, it's, it's not the point of origin of the furnace, yeah. the boiler. The, the boiler is projected to have a 10-year lifespan, and that's why the committee decided to take the tack that we did, yeah. to, to, to take advantage of that 10-year lifespan. The problems have all cropped up on the piping system that goes throughout the building, of course, they're most of them are original pipes, and they systematically attacked all of the different areas where these leaks were happening and were down to like the last area. And they firmly believe that this one will do it and the piping system will be uh, uh, completely fixed commensurate with the life of the furnace. Okay, I'm gonna open it up and then I'll come back, Jeff. Brian, I, I thought that when we talked to one of the subcommittees that I don't remember the number, 70,000 to do all the valves and all the leaks. And we talked about doing half, you know, maybe we'll do half the work. But we said, no, let's just spend the money, let's just do them all. Why is it not, why is it not all now? Uh, why, why is there more? Yeah, I, I think it, 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 it's tough to, to backtrack at, at which point in time you're talking about. And, 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 and the other part, there were a little bit of a disadvantage. This was being handled by our engineer at the time. So I'm really kind of out of my element here talking about engineering, but we got left with what we got left with. Um, what, what, what happened from that point was there was a systematic attack. So I'm not sure exactly when that was. So the idea was, and Vonnie, you know, thought that it was best to try to hit particular spots and to see what was fixed and, and, and if that did it and if not driving it down to the pipes. So we, we didn't commit. A, a, a full blanket amount of money to all of the piping system, we, we hit it spot by spot. So we were repairing through the construction. Yeah, but I thought we had had a discussion around, all right, do we do part and try it, do part and try it? I thought we said, no, just do it all while it's under construction and be done. That what was my recollection. No, we said we're going to replace them all. Well, uh, well, well that would have entailed replacing all of the pipes. All the everything. pipes with all the traps and the, whatever we thought was leaking. You know, we, 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 we've, re we've done a number of them. Like there was at one point we did like 13 or, or 15 of the, right. the, the steam traps. Um, but basically it was a systematic approach that they came up with to target, you know, the different areas that, that, that showed failure. And, and that, that's, that was the way we proceeded. And, and you know, 90% of the system, I think, is pretty much all set. There's only a couple of spots where this, I guess the steam hits the condensation and water comes out. I don't understand, you know, how this really works. But, you know, they've narrowed it down to this particular thing. We're hopeful that they did it. The last one, you know, the architect's telling us this should do it. Uh, but, you know, if it doesn't, there's only one other thing that we can do, and, and that's, and, and I don't, it's more valves or more steam traps. I'm not sure exactly what it is. So this might not be the last time you come before us. This you will be the last time. It will be. Oh, for the, the heating? Absolutely. Okay. There's nothing else they can do, Bob. This is, you know, they, they think that they're at the end point. There's only one other step they could possibly take, and then it is what it is. But this is kind of a contingency. You're not sure if it's needed, if Correct. I understood you correctly. Exactly. It's, real, it's just a safety valve. We'll know by... So they throw the switch. Okay. And, and I think they were targeting, like, October 15th. So what would we do if the Christmas comes and we haven't spent the money? Would we take the money back? Well, no, we, we would just pass over the article. Mm -hmm. We're going to know by town oh, meeting whether we're going oh, forward. Oh, you will. Oh, okay, thing. I missed that. Yeah. I yeah. missed that. I, 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 I apologize, too. I, I, I missed, missed that, too. I'm yeah. sorry, Ryan. I I'm totally... Sorry. We're not going to yeah. know until oh, they right. turn on the heat. They're going to turn on the heat probably October 15th. That's why you said probably. That's why I didn't know. So are they, oh, yes. can we Maybe. tell them to do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I mean, yeah. I mean, that I mean, would really be a big help. The, the, the <laughs> point is it would be done before town meeting. Okay. So oh, we're going okay. to know before town meeting. I'm sorry, I missed meeting. that too. Everything's good. So, we're passing well, on. Even if it's done after town meeting, if it turns out you didn't need to do it, 
you just yeah, wouldn't spend, spend the money. Yes, right. Right. yes, but right. certainly right. it's That's a lot. It's a lot more convenient if, if they do yeah. it beforehand. Right. No, 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 we're saying gonna, we're going to want to know. I, the, the reason why I put this article was just because of timing. You know, by the time the warrant closed, we weren't going to have the heat I on. That. I missed that one, Brian. I'm sorry. I missed the door. Yeah. Yeah. Alda. Um, you answered the question about zone traps. Uh, some of the more expensive parts, or rather the steam traps. Steam traps. You have the zone valves in there, too. Uh, uh, those, I would imagine, are old. So my I, I'm not sure, Aldo, yeah. what has been replaced and what hasn't. Again, you know, I'm a, those we're, are the ones we're, that we're at a little bit of a drawback because our engineer left us, you know. Without the zone valve, you don't move any of that steam anywhere. So yeah. I, I think it's a good idea that what you're suggesting, and I would actually encourage you. It's been cool the last few days, and we have some cool days. Why don't we just light it off now and find out how it works under stress? That's what I would do. What have you got to lose? If it works, you're happy. If it doesn't work, you're going to get the money. So yeah, I think the way it is, once you turn that system on, it has to keep running. It's on. Right? It, 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 it's on. It, so. it takes a long time to build up. Right. So yeah. you, that's not something you want to just turn on and turn off the next day. You want to. Well, you're not going to turn well, it on. I'm telling you right now. I mean, if you have <laughs> the window open, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think we're long from having heat on in our houses. But yeah, we'll, that's we'll, my wife. She wants it on now. Uh, listen, <laughs> mine's on. <laughs> oh come on! We're gonna try and get it started as soon as right. we can to find out. I, I, I have a couple of questions, Brian and Michael. Um, you mentioned at the beginning of the discussion that these are old pipes. Yes, they're over 100 years old. They're cast um, iron pipes, typically. Probably. I, I don't know if some of them were replaced at some point. We did replace a number of pipes. So the the real issue. Because steam is a high pressure system, it's not like our water system at home. It's high pressure. I lived, I grew up at steam, and you can turn it on and off. By the way, it's not, they do it all the time, but um, it takes a while for the boilers to heat up. But once it heats up, it's quick. Well, I, I the, don't know. The real, it's a big the real furnace, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't I know. know no, I know, I know. But the real question is, if if you turn this thing on, and there's enough pressure built up in the wrong places, the possibility of some of these weaknesses continuing to occur can in fact require replacement of, of more than just steam valves or, or pressure valves. It can replace pipe. It can, I mean, it could be a lot of issues. Yeah. Oh, and, and I think we've already gone down that road. Yeah. I mean, th we, But you haven't turned it on yet. No, no, no. The, the, all last year it was on. Yeah. It was running. The system was working. running what, during the course of the repairs and the renovation. It ran all season. Okay. So so they, we, we, we've gone down a lot of these roads. Like, like Jeff had indicated, we had a couple of different scenarios and and then it was decided to attack it systematically I just don't want to see a catastrophic that's, failure at this point that's, that's how we got involved in doing the repairs through the construction is the heating system was running they were in the building and they said, oh look at this leak over here look at this valve over here so that's how that all got merged well, into that was the, a pretty good thing to have happen yeah absolutely oh, yeah. absolutely yeah so no we've covered a lot of ground on this thing it's been very frustrating um, but if this is there's only two more moves we, we've done one, and, and now this is the contingency for the last one. That, that's what I'm told. And that, my question is, is that if we have to get to that and that doesn't work, then what? Uh, I, I don't know there. exactly. I, I think maybe we, you, maybe there's some way to section off, cut off some some part of the piping. I'm not I'm not sure. We'd have to talk to the engineering people. Yeah, you can. I know it's nothing good. I, I don't know. You could do it. Yeah. You can make. You can do You can that. section off any. Yeah. yeah. So we'll like Mark, Mark said, these these pipes are old, but yep. you've replaced some of them. Do you have an idea of what percentage of the auxiliary units, the the pressure traps, uh, you know, the zone valves, all that? We and, and 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 I apologize. I don't have a full understanding of the heating system. It really wasn't you, you know what what we wanted. You know what our area was on this thing. Um, I, I, the only thing I can tell you is I know at one point there was a big hit of about 13 to 15 steam traps that were replaced. Um, you know, out of how many? I want to say 20, 23? 23 or 27. Tw 20, about yeah. half. Yeah, about half. But there could have been others. I mean, done that was done at one way. time. There could have been, you know, there might have been five done before that. Do you know what I mean? During the course of the renovation, the repair to the heating system was an ongoing component of what we were trying to do. So was the the whole system, not excluding the boiler, but all the auxiliary items like the the pipes, the was was that ever part of the the scope of the renovation project? 
while it was open up and then due to budget reasons? Uh, we, we omitted the heating system because of cost. So any work that was done the on the heating unit. But what about and, all and, the, and, and, so and the that, whole thing was yes. part of the original yes. project. And, and the work that was done on it came from the contingency budget as repairs. The answer your question, Mike, was no. Alberto? I need your help. When, because I'm already getting pinged ever since the warrant was made public, saying how come you're holding the armory to a totally different standard than the rest of the town. So I, I do need your help. We never heard about this till Rick sent us the warrant. When, when did we learn, Brian? What, with the heating system? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, probably over the summertime. Shame on you then. You know, probably May, you know. Shame on you, because I've been begging every oh. department saying, let me know what's coming. I just, I got people that came in here that I said it wasn't on the plan. You gotta wait, and now, I mean, we're gonna do it, I understand. Well, well, well this isn't really part of a plan, Al. This, this is really just a tail end of the building building project. We, we don't want to do this, you know what I mean? And, and you know, with all due respect, don't say shame on me, okay? We, we had our town engineer leave at a very key time on this particular project. We we're dealing with an expertise that none of us have. The summertime hit. There's been other things going on. So, you, you know, I'm, I'm doing the best I can to try to get I this together for the youth center and, and put it forward, okay? I would really appreciate... And it's not a capital sorry. item. This is an extension of the repair project. But it's still using up a big chunk of cash. We're asking all the other departments, if you're coming at us with cash needs, just give us a heads up. You know, that's why it's just a simple, hey, this is gonna come at us. You know, it's the same thing I beat up Rick over something small at one of the buildings because I said, I've been asking since May, is there anything coming? You know, just please help us out because it's already hit me. You're holding people to different standards and I'm really trying not to. You know, it's whether it's capital or not, when it's big money, you know, we want to be able to make sure, I mean, this year we're fortunate, thank God. It seems like every year so far, but if you could just in the future, if something's coming, just give us a heads up so we know what's happening. Well, I mean, you know, that's why, you know, we, we, we have, you know, the FinCom representative on the committee. You know, it's been part of the meetings that we've been oh, talked okay. about. It has not been a very easy project. There's been a lot of different things that we've been trying to, to figure out and, and, you know, alleviate some of the confusion. And shame on you, too, for not telling No you. shame, Al. There's, there's no shame. I mean, you know, I, you know, I really wish you would you know, curtail that kind of talk because, you know, we're not trying to do something uh, underhanded here. We're, we're just no, 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 indicating no, no. that, you know, we're in the midst of trying to repair the thing and we're hopeful that the repairs are gonna work, but if they don't, there's one last repair that can be done. I just, I'd like to, to know so when the chairman or whatever says, how much money do you have left? You know, this would be something mm -hmm. candidly that out of the one five, if you'd come up and said, couldn't need 150 for a repair. No, this is 30,000. This is 30. It's, it's, That's it's, why we, you're confusing it with the next one. Oh. Probably 25. 20, so I'm not real yeah. sure what you're talking about. Okay, because you know, 26,000. I thought this the, was the, the numbers. Oh, the air conditioning. No. Okay. Oh. Oh. I think you get the numbers. This is a. This is. This is 30. This is 30,000. Right. Okay. 30, and it, it worst case scenario, 30,000. Absolutely. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I have it on the list as 150. Yeah. Then that, that's Mr. why I'm chairman, reacting. I would. Uh, 150,000 is a yeah. lot of dough. Yeah, okay. You know, there's a lot of moving parts, Al, and and you know we're all just doing the best we can on this. And thing. I'm not going against you. I'm, I'm telling you, I think we're going to have to do it anyway. Well, but we're, just, we're hoping we don't. We're hoping we don't. We're yeah. hoping we don't. No, but if it if you turn it on, it goes full. We can't have popsicles at the youth center. Well, so. I mean that no. that's not going to be the case. Yeah. I mean, like you know, Aldo would indicate. You know, there might be you know different alternative maybe you know we don't spend the 25 grand maybe we just zone it off I mean I, I'm not the engineer and and like I said you know we got our knees cut out from us when our engineer left and no fault to her she had a different opportunity sure. and that's fine but you know we were left without a large degree of expertise in this area which you know we don't have 
Ms. Navita. I was going to uh, suggest, Mr. Chairman, uh, well, I will move for favorable recommendation on Article 5. Second. 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 Yep. Real quick. Um, has the new engineer had a chance to take a look at it, get familiar with the system? Um, so in the event that the future repairs come up, he, he understands that? Um, I, I know he's been over there. Um, I haven't had a chance to sit down with him and, and really give him my thoughts on it. But, you know, when he came on board, I had asked him to acclimate himself to this project. And, and you know, hopefully he's, he's been able to do that and then kind of step in. S certainly if we go forward on this or if we go forward on the air conditioning, he's going to have to step forward and take the same role that Bonnie did, yeah. Any other discussion? All right, I have a motion and a second for a favorable recommendation on Article 5. All those in favor? You up? Yep, all right, unanimous. Thanks, guys. Motion by Thank you. second. What? Motion by. Oh, uh, Bobby made the motion. Albert, Albert second. seconded it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the second article, Article 23, uh, is for uh, an air conditioning uh, at the youth center as well. I wasn't going to say armory because I'd screwed up. Uh, 150,000. Right. So, so th th this is an extension of the project. Um, again, you know, it was not funded as part of the project but it was always anticipated that it would be done there. Um, we had the roof reinforced to accommodate whatever equipment has to be there. Um, there was design work done to accommodate this re refrigerant type air conditioning. It's not a, uh, a, it's not a vent uh, air blowing system. And the plan was to make this as part of the capital plan for the youth center going forward and, and putting it down on paper and getting it before the town and getting it on the list and, and you know, having its priority. Um, this summer was extremely difficult. So the director, you know, was pleaded with us to, to, to try and, you know, get it started. So I said, okay, we, we would submit the article for you. So that's where we're at. Yep. So Al, go ahead. No, no, no. Lay into me. No, no, no. But I, no. Mike, um, we've all if you have plans like this, because right now we have a blank slate for the youth center. You know, and Brian, I believe that the youth center, and we'll take half the blame because our rep, if, if you're discussing new floor, new dog, new cat, whatever, for the next five years, and our rep is there, I'll say shame on us as quickly as I'll say shame on you, but we need to have that information. And you know I'm gonna ask from now on, but if there's plans that you have, it would be really helpful if we knew they were coming. Well, yeah. the, the thing is, and keep in mind, <laughs> they just opened the doors in May. Right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so this is it's a horrible whole, yeah. summer. It's a whole yeah. new event for that department. You had a new director, you know, so you had some turnover there. So there's been a lot of different right. things happening. So at some point, they, the you know, commission. the Youth Commission was oh, yeah. going to get together with the plan, and this was going to be a key part of the plan. And I think the summer just kind of jump-started that because it was just so bad over I there. just want it on the plan because things like with Rick, yeah. where we had the downstairs heater chiller or, <coughs> or whatever for next year, it's in the plan. We were allocating it, and he came and said, I got a problem. This year was not good. So it was easy and not, well, not easy, but we all understood it's in the plan. Let's just move this one a year forward. So if you could just... You know, nudge whoever, who's the chair of the youth center or something? Um, whoever. I just whoever it is, please I'll have to check. nudge I just and get back to us so we can start planning for it. That's all. And, and, and I'm not going to represent to you that this is, you know, a matter of life and death. I mean, I know the summer was, was very, very bad there. Um, but you know something, I mean, if you feel that it needs to be put on the plan and, and put in order with other projects, you can certainly do it. It's not the same uh, type, it, 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 it's not contract dependent like the previous article is where we want to, you know, keep the contractor tied under warranty to it. This is an independent project. It's cheaper doing it this way than keeping it part of the building project. We don't have to worry about overhead. We don't have to worry about contractor profit. So I think it's a better way to do it. Um, and again, it was just precipitated by this very, very bad summer. And again, Certainly. it's just like the fire truck. I appreciate when we asked uh, 2E Rev 2, do you absolutely need it this year? And he said, 
If you tell me I <coughs> really have to keep it for a year, I will. I appreciate you telling This is not life or death. Correct. No. That's you it. Know, so just, That's again, it. I'm just asking, in the I future, the anything you see coming, let us know, because then it's easier to move it around. Um, Jeff is the new, I, as of a month ago, he's your new chairman, uh, new subcommittee chairman. So in the future, everything goes through Jeff. That's new as of a month I've ago. I've emailed Jen Asser to add me to the, I, I don't get the invites, so. Yes, right. Uh, yeah, right. I, I haven't been, I've been the one that had a conflict with this meeting, but that. Uh, well, just so, for the future. So, generally. Okay, two different things here. There's, there's the building committee, which, which I was a part yeah. of, and then the youth commission. Yeah. And then Jeff was very helpful on the building committee. Yeah. Um, but then the youth commission, I'm not real sure. I'll you, make you know, sure you know, happens yeah. on that. So that's, if you guys can look at that. Great. Now, can just, um, the last article, I, I didn't have any, my only issue was the fact that we had a, a contractor tell us that everything was going to be completely taken care of. Like I said, I watched the meeting and he's point blank said it twice because Phil asked him. And that's where my issue with is was that he said it was going to be absolutely fine and obviously it's not even close to fine. And that's why my issue was more with him and was there anything that we could do with them about the fact that they said everything was going to be fine. And I understand this unforeseeable things in a hundred year old building and that's what that was. So that really that was my only issue with the heating system. This one though I do have an issue with and it's I'll be nicer than now the way I say it. <laughs> the, we have a plan, obviously a five-year plan. Adding things to the list puts you automatically, pretty much in my mind, at year five and things will move up. You don't add things to a long-term capital list and immediately move it to year one. Brian, you know that me and I, about whether it was the senior center or whatever, I'm a stickler on this kind of stuff, is that because if you know there's no way that we just found out we needed air conditioning. We knew we needed air conditioning before we even started a shovel in the ground on this. So to me, if you guys had put it on the list then, do I think you need air conditioning? Yes. You, when does it come up? Am I gonna vote for it? Yes. I'm telling you right now. But I need, I need to know in advance, I need to plan for it. As you had mentioned, Brian, the heating system is, of course, you know, this is an, an essential thing. The air conditioning, though, it's not a life or death thing. It is something that I, I would like to see put on the capital plan. Um, I really would like to see if you guys would pass this over and just put it on the plan and see if we can address it in a future situation. I'm not telling you you're going to wait five years, but can we just put it on the plan and see where it fits better within the, the whole town's, you know, capital purchasing? You know, I'm not saying you're going to wait five years for it. If we can fit it in earlier, if we find that there's a bigger need, I would appreciate it because, you, you know, I, I'm a thing about that with the capital thing, getting I, it on the plan. I, 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 so. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was basically doing this as an accommodation yeah. to the director yeah. Yeah. because no. it was really tough over this. This is not part of the building I, project. I, I mean, you know, the foundation was laid, and, you know, at some point it really should be done. So she asked that it be no, submitted sooner. There's no question, but I mean, I hope you know where we're coming from on that. It's it's no one up here is saying that we spent you know close to six million dollars on a building. We shouldn't let kids sweat their brains out in the summertime. I mean, that's ridiculous. But I'm not ready to jump in and do that right now. And obviously, I apologize. I'm not speaking for the whole board here, which I'm going to open it up. And obviously, if they have comments, but I just want you to know where I'm coming from. And you know, I'll wait. I apologize. So I'll, was I'll echo your comments that I'm, I'm just a little disappointed that it's. It was, it's been a planned improvement that wasn't on our plan. Um, so, I mean, that, that's our, my big concern with it. We, we, we spent uh, $5.2 million renovating the building, and then uh, last year we added a little under 300000 Yeah, um, to finish it up. Um, and, and through that whole process, we never heard that this item um, – wasn't part of that plan and that was planned for the future, at least in, in the building committee's uh, plan, but not on our capital plan. So. Did I see you, Jerry? No? No, I, no need to repeat what you, okay. both you said very well. Alberta. I don't need to. As Please. you said, now I let you have it. And I still say shame on you for not cluing us in, but at this point, this is a unique year. We've got the money. Whether we take it up a year, it will be on the plan for next year. I can see it coming. So I, might I as well, uh, no, Brian, let yeah. me just finish. Might as well bite the bullet, do it, and no. you've heard us. No. Please don't do it again. I wouldn't do it. Well, uh, let's vote. Let's, my vote, no, my no. motion is Wait. favorable. Wait a minute. Let's put it on the capital plan and no. low priority. Let, let Mark, all the ducks fall down. I, I, it'll be next listen, year. I mean, everybody said no. everything about... Next year? 
whatever we needed to say. Brian, you know and, and you agree um, that we all put this all together in order to do the right thing for the town, and you said that, and we respect that. And um, with that in mind, then my recommendation will be to pass the article and, and put it on the plan unless you work on it. Yeah, I, I don't work too hard the, to make it go. No, no, right. no I, I don't know that the youth commission has had an opportunity to even do a plan yet on a building that they just moved into. Oh, we so I mean, I don't want to, you know, seem like they should be penalized for not doing this plan that they really weren't able to do because they're they didn't know what they had. So I think that you know that the, the time is right now to do that and go forward. And they have done a number of things over there voluntarily. They've they've renovated downstairs and that sort of thing. Uh, where did the where did the number come from? Hundred fifty thousand. Um, the town administrator got the uh, facilities manager and uh, E and E. I think it is um, the, the your facilities manager. The towns, Carlos yeah. Benjamin. Uh, uh, we, we got a um, a set of specs, or I shouldn't say specs. Uh, well, I guess it is specs on on a system from the architect. Gave it to the town administrator. He got the. Um, a facilities manager involved who then brought I think it's ENE &E, to come in and evaluate and they gave us a proposal is that the whole building uh, it's the the front part yeah, and was not the gym oh, the gym okay. is not that, gonna that be in the gym would not because that's why it looked low to me so that would make sense no, it it? Would, yeah, it's, it's never been designed to do no, never no, never no, was designed no. to do the gym never designed I was never wondering designed. how you were gonna do the uh, basketball court here no 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 yeah, no, no, that's no, why so I was talking about okay okay what was done with the basketball court is we have exterior roof fans yeah. so that's to go out out the, to try yeah. yeah so that's how that was designed yeah. so there's no plan to ever put AC in the gym correct. correct that was not one, ever one of the foreseen. things that really caught us off guard this summer was the heat but the the total head house is all redone up and down and there's rooms that we can rent there's a conference room that we can rent there's arts and crafts rooms that we can rent well the upstairs was so unbearably hot all summer long we just we couldn't we couldn't use those rooms for the the camps and then we couldn't rent them out in the evening because it was just so hot so we kind of were really caught off guard we didn't think it was going to be as hot as it is yeah of course um, in in the initial design that you folks have been given everything including the electrical service in that building has it's been determined that it will handle the additional uh, electricity that will be needed to run the compressors and the condensers and yes. the fans and whatever else? Absolutely. They even put the, the roof, they structured the roof in such a way that eventually they knew there was did an they, increase. Did they already come through the, uh, through the roof? Do they have conduit through the roof to bring, bring down to the building the, the uh, coolants that are needed? I don't know the answer to that, because but I, I know the roof I hate to was think we're going to cut the roof again when you just put a new roof on. Yeah, no, I, I'm not sure exactly yeah. about the, the, the roof cuts, but whatever, that, that... The support is there. The support is there. Fine, okay. Tommy? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I hate to disagree with my good friend and fellow board member, Al, but I do recall last year there was some building in town where we wanted to spend $7,000 for a bathroom, and we were adamant that said we've got the money, but we're not going to do it because it's not on the plan. And You're right. We have a system, and we are a committee of systems and rules and regulations, and we said no. Um, so I think in this particular case, I would like to see a more detailed plan. We've got seven or eight months before the summer comes up again. Let's pass over it go and get three or four plans and so we really know I mean it's 155 now on a broad brush maybe it's 275 maybe it's 75 let's dig a little deeper the devil is in the detail as you know mm -hmm. so I, I like the chairman's recommendation that we, we pass over it if they so agree I had and, said uh, that earlier and I'm going to get some more information I would like to withdraw the motion because I stand corrected you are right Say that a little louder, Al. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shame on you, Al. <laughs> yep. All right. I'm listening. I, I think it's fair to ask for a plan yeah, like we have of every other large amount. Yeah. We haven't worked that hard to get 
to get here and, and not do it. I, I right. think, and we all agree to that. And it may even be that this could come up as a special circumstance because that would allow them to. How long would it take to do? Do you know? Oh gosh, I, I'm not sure if the is it months. Is time it, frame. See, all I of those answers would be all those no, no, questions I'm, would I'm be. Just the point if is, if we did it in May, we have couldn't it do for it in the summer. Yeah. May tell me. That's what I'm just saying. This could come up as a special circumstance right. for May. Okay. Yeah, but we now, need more information. We have to make the If you now, agree, that makes sense. At this please point, just we, come to we, the committee we, and we'll we, put together the we, we have an October meeting. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot and tell you whether you're going to pass it over or not unless you're willing to, to say that now. So if you – we have to have an opinion on it. So the point is I'd like to wait till the October meeting. You talk to your committee. If you are going to pass it over, then obviously we're fine. But if you're not going to pass it over, we're going to need to take a vote on what our recommendation is. So that's how I'd like to handle it is put it off till our October meeting so that you can, you guys may say, forget it, we're doing it anyway, and then we need to have an opinion for town meeting. So Do we need a motion? Or to move, to, move to table, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Mm -hmm. Second. Yeah. Is that, is that cool with you? Yeah. I have a meeting Monday night. All right, great. Yeah, and, and I think that probably makes uh, better sense at least procedurally because if you notice the article is from the Omri Renovation Committee yeah. well the, the article I think what you're all saying in terms of a plan really ought to come from the Youth, Youth Commission, Commission. I, I think yes you know what I mean? so, I agree. so so they've got to you know decide go forward uh, air conditioning uh, to, 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 you know any other items that might be there right we, I got a side question for the good dr. Walsh yes you're a doctor uh, now <laughs> You're saying you're renting out the rooms, the gym, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. I keep hearing programs in town, like, um, what do they call it, Special Olympics, yeah. basketball and such. They got no money. Are we making any kind of, you know, are we doing a set aside to help out, you know, the kids yeah. in Milford? You know, if they can't afford to rent it by the hour, we give them a few hours. I would have to see the actual rental contract to answer accurately, Al. But yes, are the Milford programs yep. getting a different rate than the outside, out of town programs and the like AAU out of town? Absolutely. That I understand, but are we doing anything to take mm -hmm. care of? I mean, some of these groups I hear have no money. You know, some of the special, Bobby Littleton offered his gym because one of the programs had nothing. Could you take a look? Is there any way of putting aside a few Al, hours? I'm gonna, I'm, I, I want to have you guys in to talk about like the open of the building, all your programs. We we'll talk about the budget, all that kind of Just stuff. Include it. So, so in maybe in November or October, you don't. Two, I yeah, October. I think no, November, we're going to be worried. We're going to try to have a short meeting and just do the finish up the article. Okay. Maybe November. Right. May, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at me. He's pointing over here. Uh, November, <laughs> December. If you guys can come in and just sure. go over all that and address questions like that, I think that'd be great. And you'll be more prepared. I mean, there's no reason to put yeah, you on the spot. Just send me the date answers. you want us here. Of course. Oh, I don't. I didn't expect an answer tonight. Yeah. I just. I'm hearing the parents. We have a whole proposal put together for you. Good. Awesome. That's Even awesome. if we have to put something in so that awesome. the, yeah. the kids with no money can still practice. Yep. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks a lot, Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very Chris, much. we have the uh, motion and second. We just need a... Well, what, uh, oh, I apologize. Uh, I need a vote to, uh, that we're going to table this to our next meeting in October. So moved. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. Uh, the last uh, article I would like to move to uh, our October town meeting, that is Article 36, which is our article, which is the stabilization contribution. Uh, new information has come to light about our possible financial position that uh, we still need to go over. It looks like we might have a little bit more free cash than we thought we would have. So uh, there might be... You think? <laughs> if we voted on 37. It's it is. Um, tax. No, that's no, that's that's on the next meeting as well. So, if that's okay with everyone, I'd like to put off Article 36 till the next meeting when we can have a little bit more discussion with the financial team and talk about if that uh, number needs to be adjusted at all. Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday? Second Wednesday. Uh, yeah, it'll be our normal October meeting. I guess. October 12th. Yep, I want to make sure it may, that meets a report. So maybe if we, we might want to eat early, I don't have the date for that, so I'll address the report, that. Report. It's passed. Um, Oh, yeah. Town meeting report we're doing. Yeah, you can't wait. Paulie has said I got to okay. get to That's him by and we'll, next we'll, week. We'll do we'll do things on the chairs. What I was going to suggest is, if unless the committee has yeah. an objection, no. the articles that we're deferring, we'll do like we did last year and say at the time of the meet at the time of printing. Perfect. Yep. And then Paul will put on the 
town meeting chair is an addendum. And you know, we can even do an email to town meeting members and have this on our website as well, just like all the information for the uh, capital projects. We can even have our report as well as dropping it on the chairs. Uh, so yes, yeah, so then we will meet on our regular uh, scheduled time then, Jerry. So Thank I was you. thinking maybe we'd have to meet earlier in October, but if we're not going to meet it anyway, we're not going to meet it. October 12th. The 5th, October 5th? That's the second Wednesday? No, October 12th. 12th. If there's a Wednesday. Then that's a mistake then. It should be October 12th or the second Wednesday. Yeah, October 12th. So, all right, with that being said, thank you guys so much. I think that was a great two nights. I think we got a lot of information and went through everything quickly. I would, Aldo. I was have Thank you. I got a motion from Aldo to adjourn. Oh, we didn't. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Thank you. Sit back down. Thank you. Do not second the adjournment. Thank you very much. I got to keep you here longer. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, school department. They have two articles on the warrant. Articles 13 and 10. Article 13. Uh, they have decided to pass over. That was for an elevator that has uh, more years under its belt. So they've decided to pass that over. So Article 10 is about some fire doors over at Stacy. Uh, once again, that's a capital project that was discussed uh, at that subcommittee. <clears throat> so I'll turn that over to Capital L and. You can tell us about it. <laughs> I love it. Didn't we already discuss it before? No, we did not. Article 10. Basically, there are, if I want to say, 20, 29. 29 doors in Stacy that really don't meet the safety and fire code. They're held in place by magnets. And when there's an emergency situation, it's normal. We do that in our GMP facilities. When you hit the override, the magnets let loose and the doors are open. Uh, the problem is it, it no closed. longer works. They, don't they close. They close. Or close. It depends. Yeah. Yeah, they're already open. They're already open. Um, it's a fire. The, we close them. The issue is when you hit the um, the switch, not all the doors are opening. Some of them could be locked closed. Okay, so if the door had a magnet and it was closed, the magnets don't release, and now you've got a problem. Or they don't close, and you have a problem. The magnets hold them open. Yes. When the alarm sounds, the, the magnets release, release and, and the, the doors, doors close. close. Okay. <laughs> then you have to, to manually open reset on. the door. Yeah. Right. That's so the, right now they believe that they can salvage about six doors, that there's still low traffic areas. Is it the door that's the, that's the door? No, and it's the mechanism. And the, and the Aldo, it the depends. And some of the high traffic areas, the, the door's gone and the mechanism's gone. Where's the proposal? Okay, I'm not denying that that's the case, but one would think in a, these doors don't open and close all the time. Correct. They only close when the fire alarm sounds. So if they're always open and, and youngsters are passing through, I don't understand how the door is hung. It's, it's middle school kids. I think they're kicking them. They're, oh, there's okay. damage to them, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So this really is 23 doors out of the 29 and 29 Chris, mechanisms. Chris, I think some of these doors the door. have a center post, too, that get mauled. That's correct. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some else. of the doors, yeah. they're going to put in the center post so that the magnets, Yes. they have to replace the center post so that they do hold. In certain, in certain. You got double doors. Double doors. But you don't have a center post. It's some of them they're going of them. to. Some of them they're going some to introduce that in certain areas that. You know, they're going to take them out. Is that by code? Whatever. No, sure. How would you get through those things? Aldo, I think they're removing some of the center posts, but then they have to yeah. reset the hardware. Oh, I know you have to reset the yeah. hardware, and that's probably that's what be the, the biggest that's what the biggest problem. is the electronics. So the doors are very expensive, but it's the electronics. And then they got to rewire it, so it's like thirty grand worth of rewiring the control system and. Absolutely. That's At the your, end of the day, it's going to be about $174,000 to redo all of Stacy. Yeah, that's, that's it's been true. on the plan for a number of years. This is I've the only. They're probably two hour doors. Yeah. We've talked about it before. Okay. Yeah. Two hour door. And the, the plan is on, the, on the, the website. The full yeah. plan is on the with website details, well. except for which door will be chosen is on the website. Rob Quinn came and said he knows the kind of, the type of door and all, but the exact model and vendor. He's worked with um, the vendor we have been working with. I want to say NME, but whoever it is. The proposal's up on the website. We went through every piece of it, and it seemed to be a worthwhile exercise to do now. 
and as usual, we express to the schools um, that if any funds aren't used, if they do replace only 23 doors instead of 29, that that funds are returned and they don't spend it on copy or paper, which they usually do. So, but anyway, they know that they're not doing it with this project. So, Mark. The only question I have, Mr. Chairman, is that, that their report says that they no longer meet fire safety code. Um, I, I didn't know that it was a requirement that everything, as the codes change, be brought up to code unless there's a renovation going on. So I'm, I'm not sure I understand what that means. That yeah. it doesn't meet code. I was trying to be politically correct. Yeah. Rob said five years now it has not met code. Don't care. So the code when it was put, they were put in was correct. Yes. And so code, the code, now the code they don't change. work. That's okay. But the, the doors don't work. The doors don't work. That's the issue. The med code. But yeah, but I, Aldo, yes. even if it med code back when no, Paul Revere put them in, <laughs> the real issue is the doors don't the work. They're not. Yes. The key, they're not yeah. replacing the doors to meet the code. They they're replacing work. the doors because they don't code, work. And they don't work. You have to fix them. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The ball game. I understand. No, no. I was trying to be nice. I didn't want to say it's been out of. All right, guys. Do I have a motion? Moved. Second. Uh, motion by Mark, seconded by Aldo for a favorable uh, recommendation. Recommendation. Aldo Thank you. It's late. Chairman. All those in favor? It's Unanimous. Aldo, do you have a uh, 170, 170? Oh, someone pounds. else. I used up all my adjournments. All right. Chuck, you got an adjournment in you? I certainly do. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and thank you for picking up on the school department. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. DeVita, thank you very much. Mr. All right, guys, appreciate all your work. Everybody have a great night. Charles, you're Mr.